Hi class, this is a second video on the Bohr model of the atom and in, in particular we're paying a lot of attention to the hydrogen atom uh, mainly for the reason that hydrogen is by far the most abundant element in the universe and so a lot of times when we're looking at uh, pictures of stars and galaxies uh, the hydrogen is of particular importance. Um, but everything we learn about the Bohr model we can also apply to other types of atoms and the only difference between hydrogen and other types of atoms um, is that other atoms will have different sets of energy levels but still the way that uh, photons of light are emitted and absorbed by atoms um, that's true for for all different types of atoms but th these diagrams right here these this is for hydrogen so Niels Bohr had was able to calculate the energy levels of the uh, the various energy levels of the hydrogen atom. So you have the ground state, that would be the state closest to the nucleus where the uh, where the protons are, and the ground state that's where the electron wants to spend its time, and uh, that's where it would be if it wasn't excited in some way. But you can excite the electron and you can bring it up to one of these higher energy levels. So if you bring it up to the first excited state, what that means is that the electron now has 10.2 electron volts of energy. It requires 10.2 electron volts that you provide to the electron to bring it from the ground state to the first excited state. And you can do that by, with a photon. You allow the atom to absorb a photon of just this amount of energy. Uh, so if you have a photon which has 10.2 electron volts of energy, it can be absorbed by the hydrogen atom, and that will cause the electron to transition from the first, ex uh, sorry, from the ground state to the first excited state. It can skip the first excited state. It can go directly to the second excited state, but that requires that you provide it with 12.1 electron volts from the ground state, and. Um, you can take these energies, 10.2 electron volts or 12.1 or 12.8, you plug them into Einstein's equation down there, take the plane constant times the speed of light divided by that energy, and you get the wavelength. And so 10.2, uh, 12.1, 12.8, you put those various energies into this equation and you get these wavelengths, 122 nanometers, 103, 97.3, and so on. And these are all the transitions that involve the ground state. And all of these wavelengths are in the ultraviolet. So these are all ultraviolet photons which can uh, cause these transitions. And we bundled these together into something called the Lyman series. And these are, these are uh, ultraviolet photons which we do not see with our eye. There are transitions that can occur if the electron is already in its first excited state then it can be bumped up to even higher states. So it can start out in the first excited state where it already has 10.2 electron volts. And for example, it can get bumped up to 12.1 electron volts. In order to do that, it needs to absorb a photon which has just this amount of energy equal to this transition. So that would be 12.1 minus 10.2 that would be 1.9 electron volts. You plug 1.9 electron volts into this equation, you get 656 nanometers. That's a red light, and that's this, that's this shade of red right there. It, it can also go directly from the first excited state, skip the second, and jump right to the third excited state, which we call n equals 4. That requires 12.8 minus 10.2, which is... 2.6 electron volts. You plug 2.6 into this equation and you'll get 484, or sorry, 486 nanometers. And you can do that with all the transitions involving the first excited state and higher states. And you get this way, these, this set of wavelengths, and these are all in the visible. And th that's what these are this red, that kind of aqua blue, dark blue, and so on. Um, if you go back to our first slide right here, it's this red light and this aqua blue light and this dark blue light. These are the, uh, the photons that are emitted by excited hydrogen gas. So what's going on in, those, in, those, in these emission line, uh, this emission line spectrum of hydrogen is you take some hydrogen gas, you excite those atoms. So you get the, uh, the atoms so that their electrons are in these highly excited states. As the electrons naturally transition down, if they happen to land on the first excited state, 
then they're going to emit one of these photons, depending on which state they started from, and all of these are in the visible. Uh, when it transitions from n equals 3 to n equals 2, so from the second excited state to the first excited state, when it, when it makes this transition, it emits that red light. When it makes this transition, it emits that aqua blue light that you see right there. And when it uh, and so on. So these are all the visible light photons. We call this the Balmer series. And then all the transitions that involve the second excited state, which we call n equals three and higher states. Uh, we call that the Patchen series. And those are all infrared. So these are usually the ones that we care the most about um, just because these are the ones that we can see with our eyes. And these are the ones that show up in visible light photographs are this the Balmer series of hydrogen. And here is a, a diagram which describes something called Kirchhoff's laws. And this explains the various type of spectra that we can see. Um, so starting with the simplest one, if you just look at a black body like a star, You'll remember from previous videos that a uh, star emits black body light, which means it emits a continuous spectrum of light. So that's like if you just look directly at the uh, black body itself. Over here, if you look at the black body, but you look at it through a cloud of gas, what happens is that the black body, which is emitting this continuous spectrum, that continuous spectrum of light has to pass through this cloud of gas. As it does that, the various atoms in the cloud of gas, they can pick out very specific photons which correspond to uh, transitions between energy levels. So various atoms will have different um, sets of energy levels. And so if along comes a photon which matches up with the energy difference between two energy levels in one particular atom, uh, that atom can absorb that light. And that's why you see this missing light. If you observe a black body source of light, but you observe it through a cloud of gas, the gas can kind of pick out these uh, photons of particular energy. This is called an absorption line spectrum right there. And then the third way to, uh, to look at this is if you look at that cloud of gas and the cloud of gas is being excited by the black body over here because this is shining light onto those atoms. It's causing those atoms to get excited. Uh, it's bumping them up into their higher energy states. But if you look at the cloud of gas and you don't look at the, uh, the star or the black body um, source of light behind it, if you just look at the cloud of gas with a dark sky behind it, then you're just going to see the light of those um, that's emitted as the electrons transition from higher energy states to lower energy states. So uh, I'll admit this was a very quick treatment of this. And it's a pretty complicated thing, but this is, um, I say this a lot about, about a lot of things, but this is a very important thing in astronomy because you're going to see throughout the rest of the semester that a lot of times we're going to see absor absorption line spectra, we'll see emission line spectra, and then uh, sometimes if there's nothing in between us and a black body, then you can see the continuous spectrum. And I'll just show you a couple examples. I'll first show you an absorption line spectrum, and then I will show you not necessarily the spectrum, but uh, something which is related to emission line spectrum. So this right here is a very detailed spectra of the light from the sun. So you see that, and it's just kind of stacked like this. So it goes from red to violet. And you see the black body spectrum. It gets, uh, it peaks around green, as we've learned in previous videos. Uh, but you also see all these lines. And these lines are due to uh, various atoms and some molecules that exist in the atmosphere of the sun. So the surface of the sun emits the continuous black body spectrum. But then the atoms in the atmosphere of the sun, they can pick out very specific wavelengths. And each of these dark lines corresponds to a particular atom or sometimes a molecule in the atmosphere of the sun. So it's like a fingerprint. And then the other example is something we've looked at before, the ring nebula. Here you have the very, very hot, high temperature black body, which is the white dwarf star. That is exciting the gas surrounding it. And now we are looking at basically the emission line spectra. Um, and this is what allows us to identify that, you know, this light is from oxygen, this is from nitrogen, and this is from uh, hydrogen. 
is uh, because we are looking at these atoms uh, transitioning, their electrons are transitioning to lower energy states and emitting these characteristic photons.